the poetry of the occasion. A story has no beginning or end. We are not a story, we are a poem. Thus do we arise from nothing, from nowhere, yet beginning and never ending. Within this comes a moment which rips us into small pieces, and then we have to stop. For a long time we gather our pieces, and it takes a very long time. Not to fit them back together, but to assemble them in a new way, not necessarily a better way. More a way we can live with until we know for certain this piece should go there and that one there. And always the end is nearer than we think, and it is already written. All that we have left to choose is the correct moment to begin. Are we broken and dark inside? Of course, all of us are. Thus to begin together somewhere, somehow. The poem will tell us. The world is round, the place which may seem to be the end may also be only the beginning. We are bundles of beginnings, alert to the idea that the most famous words we have are in the beginning. All things of us will not be accomplished in a hundred or a thousand days or in our lifetime, but let us begin. We are known, and so a part of us lives in the minds and hearts of others and of you. Perhaps to do good, perhaps to do evil. At best, perhaps we are a poem and may be loved in individually seen ways. We have it in our power to begin the world over again. Herein the poem comes to be. It seems unimagined in unimagined ways. Endings are abstruse, mystic, and unreal. They are but depleted beginnings, purposed to be commuted to newer ones. And where come these? They float from dreams. They are in the view of your created nature admired. They are in your majesty, come to us in ancient words and in continual interpretation of you within ourselves. Was there any reaction to me in the universe, or did my ship simply sail calmly on? Did I startle the birds and make them fly up? We need to know, we need to see and hear and smell in order to feel. We need to feel in order to make something of this life, to create something that will rise above the fray. Yet these are but the physical phenomena. In speaking to you and listening, we have come alongside, actually within your spirit, such that an entirely different realm is entered. Did we first have Aramaic, then Sanskrit, onto Hebrew, Latin, Greek? The deep language in the realm of the spirit is unknown to us. Though we have and always have always had our spirit, it does not enter your far realms of mystery. It does not know the poetry of this place, nor its occasion. It is a lost language, forsaken in the garden of our Edenic dialogue. These mysteries are not something quaint, belonging to a black book called the Bible, but actually the truth at the heart of reality today. Being therefore exalted at the right hand of God, and having received from the Father the promise of the Holy Spirit, he has poured out his sovereignty, sovereignly one spoil to your beloved subjects. For you are a king, a king who is God, not a constitutionally established king, but the natural ruler, creator, sustainer, and effectively the life essence of everything that is. The unlikely anger of the slam of God is the wrath of love, which has been spurned, of truth that has been buried, 
and of purity that has been trampled underfoot. One day the meek and merciful and gracious Jesus will have to rule and break them with a rod of iron. Those who have refused to yield to your message of love and truth and grace to your very person. Occupying your throne, you bestow to us all things of the universe. The Spirit of God bringing us to near divine sanctification and perfection. Even our bodies made glory in the shining light of original Adam and of Jesus who simply, through love, bring your life into us. Amen.